Okay, so as said, for, for the experiment, um, I have two metal plates that we can connect together, uh, or not, not really connect together, but that we can place together. And um, I have this plastic here. I'm not sure, I, I should have measured before. I maybe have it somewhere, but I would guess it's probably more than a, more than a millimeter, right, from the thickness. And it's also, of course, we don't know the permittivity of this plastic. Usually plastic has more than air. Let's say something like uh, two times more, three times, four times more. But here it's also a challenge because there's, it's not full plastic, there's some air in there. Um, so, but if you want to calculate something, you, you, can, you can do the same um, calculation as before, but just take 15 by 15 centimeters um, and take some larger spacing between the plates and um, take some permittivity that is maybe two times the permittivity that we had before. And so I have brought some clamps from home to firmly hold this together. And so now we have a nice plate capacitor with two cables attached to it. Okay. So I will try to put this on the table here and go back to my screen share and move my laptop a little bit around. And so there's my camera, my additional camera that um, can measure here. And fortunately the display is not super sharp, but I have some RLC meter from a company called GW Instec. Um, I think it's some Asian company that sells um, not so heavily priced measurement instruments that from my point of view are still quite good and quite, quite reliable. And mm, so now it's a bit difficult to see, but um, you can see it, it's measuring CS and RS. And the C, of course, stands for capacitance, and the R, the R stands for resistance. You can also see there's some picofarads and some mega ohms there. Um, and the S stands for series. So it, it, you, you have these two, two things, and whatever you connect here uh, will now be measured. And um, uh, this is very small here. It's measuring at the frequency of one kilohertz with a voltage level of one volt that is applied here. So it's applying some voltage. It's somehow measuring current by amplitude and phase. And from this calculating some impedance and then converting this impedance into some um, capacitance and resistance. And there are different measurement modes. If I go to measurement setup and go down here, yeah, this is now super, super small, but you can measure. Maybe I can bring it closer a little bit. Yeah, so you can, you can measure uh, capacitance uh, um, and resistance in series, capacitance and D is some, let's say, loss factor, um, parallel capacitance and resistance. And so there are the same options for inductance. There's the same option for um, resistance and Q is some, some quality factor if you have some res resonance circuit. And you can also just measure impedance, what we will do later by amplitude and phase, by real and imaginary part, um, stuff like this. But we will just go back and keep with the setting that we have. Maybe we can change the frequency um, because we don't have so super high um, capacitances, maybe we can go up to, so 100 kilohertz is the highest thing that you can have here. Maybe, maybe we take 10 kilohertz. This is probably reasonable. Okay. Um, so then I can place this maybe a little bit to the side here. And now, so here's my plate capacitor. Um, and let's connect the cables. And uh, have you have you in the meantime calculated something what we should get approximately? 
I didn't. I you, you, okay. Yeah. So, but if we uh, if we check the result before, uh, that is still somewhere here on the screen. So now we have a little more of area, but we also have slightly more distance, and we have a little more here. So at the end, we should not get something super different than the a couple of hundred picofarad that we had before. And you can see that even without having something connected here, the instrument already measures some picofarads. So let's connect. And then we get 138 uh, picofarads, which is sounds reasonable and some series resistance. I don't really know where the series resistance comes from, but maybe this is kind of lossy and maybe my connection is also not the best, uh, but I, I would not take too much look onto this value, but the series capacitance looks meaningful. And if we would change uh, our measurement setup here to measure parallel capacitance and once again go measure as so all parallel capacitance would be the very same here in this setup. Maybe I can bring this a little bit to the front to make it better visible. This does not look too bad. Okay. Excellent. So, um, yeah, 139, something like this for, for the capacitance here. Okay. So what I will do now um, is I will um, pull this apart and just use these the smaller plates that I have. So and they have just half of the size. And if we just have a capacitor with half of the size of the plates, what what would we expect yeah. Yeah. that we just get half of the capacitance anymore. So if we do this and my my camera is confused. Um, yeah, so here once again I have the capacitor with half of the plates. Let's connect them. And it's measuring. And before we had 130 something, now we just get 59, 60 something. It's, it's a little less than half. Um, yeah, but I'm, I'm not sure. Maybe I also have less than half of the area. Um, if we go back to the um, measurement setup and measure this series capacitance still we get the same value so this the capacitance at least seems to be reliable okay so let's go back to the original plates and let's just um, put this plastic foil in between there. So for now I will take two of these layers, but they are, they are thinner, much thinner than, um, than the solid plastic that I had before. So this is quite thick um, and solid and this is just some thin flexible foil. But now I have in total Four four layers of this of this foil. Uh, so once again, let's clamp everything together. Nice package. Um, go back to my screen share. So here is the new the new setup. Uh, large plates. Four layers of this foil. Well, what would you expect for the capacitance? It should increase. It should increase compared to the one that we had before. So before we had 130 
picofarad, 140 picofarad, something like this. And now we should get, I would guess, I don't know, uh, a couple of hundred, maybe 500, 600 picofarads. So let's see. Oh, we get even more. We get 700. 37 picofarads which this with this self-built capacitor and now you can see that we get interestingly much less serious resistance um, and if we go to measurement setup and and change it to the parallel setting okay we get practically the same value there but the parallel capacitance uh, the parallel resistance is obviously so large that it's not really able to measure something there. Okay, so then last thing uh, that we can do is I will disconnect it once again and uh, remove my clamps here and now rebuild it in a way that I take just two layers of this foil of this so just one, one layer of this back but then it's two layers of this plastic um, and clamp it back together and once again what would you expect what happens what should happen to the capacitance should be doubled. it should should be doubled so if we have half the distance um, cap capacitance should should double should increase so before we had something like something like 700 my the camera is confused um, still confused it's still confused uh -huh. okay so we have something like we had something like 700 so now if i connect it again um, of course these the connectors should not touch each other. Ah, so that's once again disconnected. Um, okay, there, there it is. But we don't. Ah, we should not have a short circuit between them. Okay, this this looks good. So then we get. Um, now we get nanofarad. Before we had picofarad and so we get 1.3 nanofarad which is already qu quite a lot let's say no? so now we have we would have built a useful a meaningful capacitor um, that could already store some charge and of course if we would just use one layer of this plastic foil then the capacitance would, would once again double okay so Mm, quite nice small experiment uh, to demonstrate what is the influence of the area and the distance um, of a plate capacitor onto the measured capacitance. And the last thing that we can maybe check um, just to make sure that it has no, not such a big influence is if I change this frequency. So here we have this 10 kilohertz. So if I go back to measurement setup and um, so let, let's let's go back to the so we have 1.347 and this is quite constant quite uh, reliable so if i change the frequency and decrease it to 1 kilohertz and go back to measure still we, we get almost the same value um, I think before we had here a 7 instead of the 9 and if I go and increase the frequency to the highest thing that we can get here 100 kilohertz and go back to measure still more or less the same value so it's it does not depend on frequency um, and of course <coughs> it should not depend on frequency in this case so this looks good uh, looks reasonable looks meaningful